what up guys welcome back to the channel my name is your message today we have a different dynamic because you know <laughs> COVID-19 why not everybody's jumping on this kind of sort of streaming podcast slash talk slash uh, I don't know human you know communication thing yeah but today we have Lang which is um, a photographer based in Utah that I've been following for a while and uh, he gladly you know accept to join me on this and uh, we're going to talk a little bit of photography and approaches and cameras and all the good stuff that we like uh, as uh, photographers and probably specifically film photographers. You know, we enjoy that side of of the um, this art form. But, um, Elang, why don't you tell us a little bit about you to uh, uh, our audience, which, by the way, <laughs> where we did this and it failed miserable. So this is <laughs> this is take two, <laughs> hopefully, right, right. <laughs> hopefully the final one. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, man, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so my name is. Uh, hold on, <coughs> allergies are getting me. Sorry. My name is Lang Kim, and yeah, and I live in Utah right now, currently. Uh, originally from Vietnam, and uh, and then we moved here to the United States. We lived up in. And we actually, when we first moved here, we moved to uh, San Diego, the military base. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, uh, what is that? Camp Pendleton? Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. So, yeah. So we stayed there for a while. My dad was military. Yeah. Uh, he was involved with special forces. And that's how we came to the United States. Sweet. But nice, man. That, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. after that, we... Uh, I moved, we moved to Utah, and then I moved back. Well, after I graduated from Utah, I moved back to Northern California, which I spent, major, well, majority of my adult teenage slash teenage years, and then uh, got married and moved here. Sure. Uh, and, and all this time, I, I've, you know, I, I was shooting film, at, of course, at the time, and, and nothing else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then digital came around, what, 1994, 95? Yeah, around right? that time. And that was like maybe 6.5 uh, <laughs> Mega miles, peak. right? So it wasn't all horrible. In fact, it was horrible. <laughs> I went back to shooting film. Yeah. And so I've been doing it since then. And uh, now I, I incorporate into my professional shoots. Sweet. Uh, along with my, uh, my uh, professional uh graphic design so like i designed this logo for uh, the company i work for sweet for. um been doing it for 25 for, for years now as a graphic designer yeah. along with my photography uh on the side just as a uh, backup kind of thing right sweet but, yeah uh, that sounds anyway, pretty awesome yeah it's been a life life career um photography gets me extra money to either purchase cameras like you see in the background <laughs> sure. or or even some new cameras let me show you <laughs> Are you, we're gonna start already showing up <laughs> you ready here we go <laughs> why not oh, oh. No. look at that that's like a freaking tank right there it is a tank yeah uh so it, this one i would compare it to the so this is a digital one right yeah yeah and I would compare this one to the uh, EOS 1V or EOS V, uh, something V. Yeah. yeah. Right? And it's it takes the same battery. Oh, cool. So Right? So I can throw this in there and pop it both. There you go. Both of those videos. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's my uh, newest. Addition? Yeah, yeah new I mean, addition. I mean, you have a lot of a lot of stuff like i've seen you know <laughs> by the way if you, lang has an awesome youtube channel where he do this frankenstein almost match up with vintage lenses and cameras like it's so cool you guys need to go but um yeah you have a lot of a, a lot of collection of stuff you know like because i yeah, see and this is like uh over what five years of collecting i just i got really obsessed with it like yeah it, it happened. a teenager you know you couldn't afford anything Right, you know, it's like uh, my first camera camera was a Canon AE one program from Japan. Yeah, and it had it had it had all the prime lenses, the twenty eight, 
the 50 and I think even 120 or no 135 sure and so I actually ended up selling it to buy something else I can't recall but uh, I ended up with an F F1 the Canon F1 the original right gotcha so it's a really have, nice camera have, have, yeah have you played with that sorry the F1 have you played with the Canon F1 um I hold it like you know with friends they, they use it but I, <laughs> I never really shoot with it but I, I liked it I like the looks of the camera it feels great yeah like you know, that was the top of the line camera that probably you could get. Or, oh yeah, you know, back in the days. Yeah, it's, back it, in the day, you, yeah, I couldn't afford that. Yeah, but, exactly. But now as an adult, and uh, you know, if you <laughs> you work more and and earn more, so yeah, totally you get to play with more. Hey, you know, my kids are you know are entitled for the toys. I'm entitled to get my own toys. <laughs> you know, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's case you know. You gotta, you gotta treat yourself every now and then. Yeah, exactly. So tell me a little bit about how you. Your first approach um, with film, and we we are we somehow I mean we uh, probably younger people, you know specifically right. I hate the word, you know when they cut like, like generations and put they put names and tags, but I mean in this case for sake of practicality, uh, millennials probably a lot of them yes they really never grow up with film they start discovering now because the boom right now. But for us, for us, we have. I think you will. You will. Uh, sorry, will agree that we start experience film with our family photography and stuff like that. Right, but and that's how it started for me too. You know, yeah. I was the family photographer. Yeah, and uh, everybody just liked my perspective, and then I just continued shooting throughout high school. Yeah, um, along with photography, I was doing illustration at the time too. So that's kind so of what was... drew me back to my uh, photography right right but, it was easier than ca capturing images than illustrating it there you go but for you when when was like the first time that you sort of like um it may click like okay i want to really go serious with photography as serious yeah. for you and like right. uh you know kind of like even if it wasn't professional like oh i'm gonna become or like make money out of it but like right. truly, truly choose it as a, a way to express yourself. Right. So that would have been back, I want to say five years ago, really. Yeah. And I shot literally every day for one whole year, but that was with a digital camera. Right. Trying to re-familiarize myself with the settings, right? And there's so many settings, and I just got too frustrated. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I picked up my film camera again, and and uh, you know, it it was good because okay, so digital teaches you how to shoot. Uh, you can make all the mistakes you want, right, without going through rolls and rolls of film and totally. not achieving anything. Yeah. So with digital, I would say to any of the hipsters or the you know, <laughs> the the kids that are, that are shooting now, yeah, yeah, shoot with digital. Like learn the settings, right. Stop! Stop putting it on program. Stop putting it on, on a uh, auto. Uh, auto, yeah, you know? or P, yeah. right? Most of P. the camera P. You know, a lot of people I I've talked to is like, oh, P professional, like no, <laughs> P for program, my friend, right? <laughs> and M for manual. So, yeah. so I would say if they want to get proficient in film photography, learn digital. Yeah, yeah. that's that's. I don't know if that's counterintuitive. But I think it's very important that you understand the yeah. the the three most important thing, right? The, right. the aperture, the, uh, Try the to speed, speed, and the uh, ISO. Yeah, right? exactly. So all the, those three triangles. The holy like trinity that. of photography. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah. at least with digital, if you mess up, you can, you know. And that's the other thing. It's just I think they get too lazy and they say, "Oh, I'll just I'll just fix it in post. I'll shoot," right. you know. In, in uh, Lightroom, like no, I've seen so many wedding photographers that don't, <laughs> don't know what they're doing, and every shot was out of focus. Yeah, every everyone is like, and they charge thousands of dollars, and it just ruined their experience with totally with, uh, photographers. You know, they think, oh, but you know, these. I live in a state where there's more photographers than there are photographers. If yeah. you're no, no, I get you, yeah, right. 
just like videographers there's tons of videographers like oh, all the videographers yeah like when i went to uh <clears throat> this was probably two years ago i went to anime anacon or anime what is it called comic-con no no it's it's like comic-con but, but it's for anime anime okay animated but so, yeah, yeah. Uh, i can't think i want to say but anyways i was speaking to the young hipsters you know the, the <laughs> what do you call the millennials right they're yeah. like they're like oh i acting too prissy and you know i i asked questions that uh that i wanted to see what they knew to right. test them out right so i acted really uh <laughs> like you know didn't know what i was doing or didn't know sure, what I was sure. and man they were so snooty yeah. i just it just had that this generation of photographers videographers they're so snooty yeah but and they shouldn't but anyways yeah for sure you know, that's, i that's i i get is. i get you what you mean um I think, you know, it's like part of the, and believe me, like, I'm not against technology or anything. Like, if I mean, without technology, we wouldn't be doing this at all. We didn't have the chance to do this. But also, like, uh, allow it to people to, you know, become, uh, you know, laid back a little bit. You have options to save some work. So then other times it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen at all. Like, you screwed yeah. up, you screwed up and you're done. Like, you know, I totally get it. And, and also these, like... Um, Uh, sometimes I feel it's more about the attitude and and like how cool I look than you know skills. <laughs> and I mean, and some people watching this may feel hurt, but it's uh, totally. I don't feel uh, we're doing it just to bash people. It's just like well, when you know it, there's certain points where the skill and and the substance is when it matters, and that's when it hurt. Yeah. That's when it hurts more because I see it happened to me. Like also like getting cocky and like oh yeah I got this. And then it come a gig or a work or a project where you screwed up and that's when it hurts more because you're not prepared. You think you're the best like yeah. guy in the world and like you know that there's always room for for um random things to happen that can screw up your job or your work. And right. it's sometimes better to have the skill to like learn how to fix that right away. Like there's no impost. I'm I'm the more you know I'm doing this, I try not to um have that thought in my head like oh i have chance in the post and like i tried to erase that and it's like i need to fix right. it right now and get it done right now exactly you know? but yeah you know, and, and and with your at your background and education that you've told me about like yeah like you know what you're doing yeah and you have time you have room to grow like just just like me i've i have so many years of experience right i'm still being taught by others even the young hipsters oh yeah right? totally so, So I'm not, I'm not totally, yeah, I, I'm not getting this <laughs> technology because technology helps you become better, helps totally. you uh, develop a different look too. Right. But like I, like you, like you, you know, I was like going, oh, is my work uh, any good? Because you see all the, uh, the young hipsters again. I, I'm gonna keep using that word, but, but the uh, the millennials, sure, they, sure, I, I Instagram pages that are like going thousands of followers like like is my is my uh you know work any good sure uh, you know when you look at like i look at my work and i and of course we're, we're the uh, worst critics of our own work because we yeah, think, yeah exactly like, someone else is going ah oh, i wish i could do that oh i wish i could do that but totally but in the end you just like you got to do it for yourself right the yeah. whole reason why we post Is, is that I reflect back on the work that I do and I go, yeah, my work is good. And it's different, right? It's I, I look at mine as more commercial work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, totally. On my Instagram than I do like if someone else did a lifestyle or or whatever it is, right? So I'm good with what I have, right? It's, and I'm a, I'm a, like, I started this YouTube video just, uh, uh, well, see, I, I, jumped on youtube in 2009 or 2017 right and i haven't done anything because <laughs> formerly i was a paintball player gotcha. I, i was a weekend warrior man uh <laughs> i'll play paintball There and you go. uh it was great and then and then i jumped back into photography because i was shooting uh paintball my friends and just like skaters were shooting skaters right right 
And so I I was I was doing that and I enjoyed it. And I was like, man, this is a better this is an easier sport than getting shot at. <laughs> totally. Most of the time I was shooting I was doing shooting, but, Yeah, yeah. You know, and you you excel to a certain point to where like, ah, I need something new, a new uh new something challenging, right? Yeah, yeah. And I and YouTube was another revenue or avenue of like expressing my uh Sure. My desires, my passion, right? And so that's how I came about it. And I've and I've only been posting oh gee. Let's see, I only have maybe sixteen videos that I posted. Yeah, yeah. Even, they're not that you know, it's like it's like we talked about it before. Yeah. The more totally. you do it, the better you get. Yeah. Uh, the more comfortable you become. You become more so, efficient. Yeah, you're more efficient. Yeah. And, and hopefully you learn from your mistakes, which I do quite a bit. <laughs> really? Uh, you know, like you, you I've learn. Did, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 <laughs> intros just to get it right. And I still don't feel like I, I get it right. But yeah, but it's it's the journey. It's the uh, the love that what we do and, and sharing with people who we not, you right. know get to know, yeah. you know along the way, like yourself and some of the other guys that I've uh, yeah. um, interviewed with. And it's 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 different than I like it. But yeah, man, like, um, you, you know what? The, the interesting part about your YouTube channel is, uh, you know, there's so many, like, there are some big channels now, you know, they're established. Yeah. And I mean, there, some guys have been doing like you, you see when they join and their first video and it's almost 10 years since they start and you get it, you know, it's a lot of work because it is a lot of work. If you want to yeah. make an income on this thing, I'm not, precisely for that at least not yeah. right now and the same yeah. as you i'm just in it was a way for me to sort of re sort of re uh, learn what i was trying to sorry for the word but learning and like a technique or something like if you do yeah. a video it's kind of like it's kind of like back in the day in the school that you will write in your notebook so you can you know get a better understanding because you're repeating it and you're writing it so I feel like doing these videos also is kind of like that. It's re retro, um, active, you know, kind of like you relearn it and it gets more, um, you know, you, you understand it better. That's how I, that's how most of the videos that I do, uh, they're kind of like that. But, you know, there are so many YouTube videos that are focused only on gear and reviews, but kind of like flashy, almost sometimes feeling like they're selling you something. And the interesting yeah. interesting part of your, about your channel is like you went a little bit on a different route where you you show some of your photo shoots like with the models and and you you, sh you show the technique and and also your thought process on why you what is the thing that you're trying to achieve with that or you start hooking up these lenses with these or like different bodies and it's just so like to me it was so interesting i get hooked and i told you the last time that with the fail um first attempt to do this that i find you through andrew the andrew youtube channel and yeah. um the reason is because at that point i wanted to shoot medium format and i just typed bronica strsi and that's one yeah. of the first videos but then from then like oh this guy has a youtube channel let me go and that's when I started seeing all these other videos, and I thought it was so cool. And since then, you know, I subscribe and I, I follow your uh, your videos. But it, you know, it's it's interesting that people think like, oh, I need to copy this guy, or I need to keep doing the same thing. And sometimes from like the most unknown, like like yourself, you have this kind of little niche in there where you hook up different bodies and lenses, and I think it's pretty cool. Like there's still room to choose different paths you don't need to follow the number one guy i guess yeah no i i agree with that um what i try to do obviously is set myself apart but at the same time i don't watch a lot of those other guys and compare mm. myself or to want to sure, do sure. what i do right because it's it's if there, you do that there's no point you yeah. gonna lose your yeah you're gonna lose your interest and like the purpose of why you started this channel to begin with, right? Exactly. For me, it was just showing other people, like, hey, uh, if you don't have the money, you can yeah. you can uh, go thrift shopping and put a, a cheap lens on a on an expensive body or a, a expensive body with a or nice you say expensive yeah. lens on a cheap and body. Yeah. That's that's what I I want to marry the two, yeah. and you get great images. I can guarantee you. 
yeah. into it. Like, but uh, you know, you try to you try to balance the two out. Like, totally. Uh, you know, go go pawn shopping, go thrift shopping, and and sometimes you get lucky. I I'm so blown away with some people who like <laughs> buying the the cheap the cheap cameras, but the expensive yeah. cheap cameras, right? Like, like oh, I bought that for twenty bucks, like. That's a how in the hell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, I always happen. Like for me, sometimes I go through eBay and it takes a lot of times to come out for one of those like lucky, lucky shots. Yeah. You, you, you can get them, but be ready to sit and wait for like months until something comes up. <laughs> and sometimes like I don't want to do that. It's, it's too much stress thinking and looking and, you know, like. Right. Probably the only... what, what you mentioned before too is like yeah those guys that are very popular like Andrew now is Andrew from uh, Danae and Andrew yeah uh, they're good they're good friends of mine um, but now he's exploded right he's yeah, yeah. Time, he's he's he devoted his time each week there's a video each week That's and so clear. but he, he's so technical and and I know him very well because of it um, sure. Whereas, like, I'm not. Like, he writes <laughs> down his scripts. Right. And, and I don't know if memorizes them or, or he's, you know, puts bullet points and says, okay, this is what I'm going to talk about. Right, you know, yeah. me, I just ramble about whatever and then end sure. it. I, I, um, you, and, uh, yeah. But, but because, of his, uh, because of his reviews, I think a lot of times when they do reviews, that whatever, you, whatever is on eBay at the time, it oh, jumps yeah. up. Yeah. Like six hundred percent. It just seems like, like man, I could afford that, but now I can't even afford it at all. Right, and I think it's a natural process or a natural path that's gonna keep going, because now people is engaged. There's there's so many you know, uh, info out there for people to jump in. Like yeah. for for example, I had a Boilander Vesa R. Um, yeah, I love that. I'm surprised you sold yeah. that. When I you sold. Told me that. Yeah. I sold, I sold it, and I, probably at some point I will get it back once the price goes down. But I bought it like probably for two fifty, two fifty, two fifty three hundred dollars like two years ago. What lens? Uh, no, at at first I just hooked it up a Jupiter eight, and then I ended okay. up ended up buying the uh, yeah just the body two fifty and three hundred dollars for the body, in an amazing condition. Yeah. And then I sold it in two or three weeks after. Uh, what's the name of this guy? It's a young guy on New York, I think. Okay. But he, he has a big YouTube channel. It's so bad with names. <laughs> I really? wish you can remember. But the guy, like three weeks after, the guy dropped the video, like my new rangefinder, Boilander Vesa R. And I, I know it. I went to eBay <laughs> and it jumped to, to six hundred dollars or something like that. It was yeah, exactly. some ridiculous price. And now the R two, which it was it was dangerously getting to the thousand, it jumped to like some ridiculous prices. Yeah, I. Yeah. I it's, so <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, it's so funny. gouging. <laughs> yeah. So um, for the people I guess watching this, the the le little lesson for this is um. If you see a camera you like and a good price, just buy it at th that moment because you never know when a new review is gonna come out and the price is gonna skyrocket. Right, right. What's what's the it, most? It, yeah, tell me. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, just like say, oh, it's the worst camera ever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it well, is, you know. You. <laughs> it's it's kind of like the context. I know the camera is so nice, and I cannot say much because I recently I show you I got the Contax U1, which I think was a good deal still. Like right now, it's a great yeah, deal. Yeah. So now that's rangefinder, right? Yeah, I mean the the way that you look through through the viewfinder, yeah, it's a okay. rangefinder, but it's fully automatic. I mean, if you right. want, even the shutter speed can be automatic, uh, out of focus. A lot of people give a bad rap. To this camera, they prefer the G2 because the autofocus is bad. Sure, sure. But the, I feel like the way you, you need to tackle this camera, it's um, like one point middle, like in the center focus. So you kind of frame, how press to the focus, and then you reframe whatever you want. Right. So, but a lot of people like don't know or like, I mean, 
<laughs> for a better, a lack of a better word, they're kind of lazy. Like I don't want to do the whole reframing. That's, that's true. But but to me, the, but to me works. Like because the price of the G two is like thousand something, and this is l a little bit less half of that. So it's like I'm fine. I'm not gonna pay the whatever two thousand or fifteen thousand dollars of the G two. You know. Right. Because I don't think it's that like. Yes, yeah, supposedly it's better, but one, I don't know how much better, and two is like I'm fine with reframing and getting used to that camera. You know? Make yeah. it work, make it work, right? That's that's the yeah, goal. Yeah, learn the camera. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean that's good. But then the other point and shoot, it's like close to the two thousand. Like it's like the T, uh, the Contax T two, I think, or T three. The Probably. one that everybody, one yeah, all the Hollywood actors are using or whatever. Oh, yes, yes. The contact T3. Yeah, the T3. And and to me, personally, I don't think it's worth what, for the money they're asking. To me, you know. It's just my I, No, I totally agree. It's just because the uh, the uh, movie stars are, like, promoting it. Yeah. But, but like this, I have, a, I have the contacts. Ooh, yeah. RTS. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. So, so, this one is the second rendition. Yeah. I have the first one. It's fully, like, you know. Manual? Yeah, very manual. But this mm -hmm. one has a lot of SLR, yeah, DSLR kind of, right? It's, it's, it's like going into it. But there's something, something wrong with it, like the motor mm -hmm. of some sort. I wish... I would, look at like how gorgeous this is. Yeah, I was deciding between that and the and the contacts you want. It's just because I prefer the rangefinder style. Like I went for the G1, but I mean, you know, that's a funny thing. Like contacts, I don't think is like everybody talks about the Canons, Nikon, Leica. Don't even you know Leica is like and everybody. Yeah, like <laughs> everyone. Everyone. yeah. So of course I have one, so I can't. Oh well, no, wait. <laughs> I used to have one. Yeah. I like a three. I had two and I sold them. I told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. M6 and M5, but I don't miss oh. them. I don't miss them. Yeah. They were, they're nice for sure. And it would be great to just have them back just to like, you know, enjoy the body and how it works. But right. it's not something that right. I, I need right now. <laughs> right. And so I like, I just did a video with uh, Mac, uh, a friend of mine out in North Carolina. He, um, yeah. He just bought himself a M6, and before that, he has the uh, the the M42, four like yeah yeah P, P whatever it's called I can't remember what it's called now yeah four but two P that. I think yeah yeah something like that and then uh, he ended up he told me that he was he has uh, he is in, in in the process of buying an M6 yeah because it has the uh, meter built in and all that inside the the uh, eyepiece. Yeah. And uh, like, oh, you, you, you have money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know? yeah, I, I, yeah. It took me a while for me because it was, I think for there's a point in a lot of film photographers, uh, not all of them, but a big chunk, I feel like Leica is like the final goal, you know? So I save a lot of money, sure. whatever. And it was like, yeah, sure. So everything that I thought is just like, I don't know. Like, for example, I bought... This Sorky 4, and it's my, it's my favorite because it was my first film Oh, camera. yeah, that's very nice. And this is like 50 bucks, and he can do it, it can do everything, really. Really? <laughs> it doesn't feel as nice, but to me, it's like I did a big review on my channel, and, um, you know, for 50 bucks, you have everything. You, the minimum stuff that you need to create or bring your, right. your vision to, you know, to reality. I, I sometimes I try to be really or push that message to people in, in my YouTube channel. It's like, sure, like, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I bought Leicas and I have nice equipment, but also, right. like, you don't need them. You just, I start with that and I think I create a decent images just with that for 50 bucks. Right. So here's the other thing, too. Like, yeah. I know, it's like, uh, all, the, all the millennials are like, I want the best. But I don't know how to use it. That's that's a big that's a big it's mistake. Same it's like I don't know how to use this uh, beautiful 5D Mark IV or a Hasselblad or you name it. Or you know? Yeah, yeah, you name it. Yeah. Or 
or you know Sony A seven R three, whatever, you know, and, and none of them know how to use the controls. It's like, right. I need I, I need someone to teach me this. Like, oh, I, or they say it's broken. Like, how's it broken? Like, well, it says it's focused, but I every time I look at it, it's out of focus. <laughs> out of focus. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> the most simple little thing. It's called the diopter. Yeah. Right. But. Anyways, I see a lot of that every day. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you, I feel my advice for people that are starting is buy something. I'm not saying go and buy the, a piece of crap or just throw your money away, but, you know, buy, buy something middle, in the middle, in between, like not too expensive, play with it. Even, right. even discover if you actually love photography in the first place. Otherwise, don't don't make big investments. <laughs> That's like I, I had to learn the the really hard way because at the beginning I I did a few really uh, financial mistake purchases, <laughs> and there's right. no really there's no other way to 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 learn sometimes than screw it up and like okay screw it up I'm not gonna do this again. But yeah. if you, if you can avoid to be in that, especially if you're gonna start you know like. Thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars purchases like that's crazy. Yeah. So let's do this. Yeah. I want to clear up the negative uh, vibe that I think might I that I'm like uh, portraying. <laughs> no, not at all, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm so. Not, I'm not against like millennials or the hipsters. Sure, or sure. Anything, even that. Like, we're all here to learn. We're all here yeah. to learn from each other. Like right. I have experiences that someone else does not, and they have that experience, and, exactly. and they can teach me. It's like whatever I can learn from anyone else, right. I gain that much more knowledge, totally. and I incorporate it into my workflow. Right? Yeah. So, so I'm not against anyone. I'm not trying to make yeah. fun of. I'm not saying I'm better than anyone. Right. Because I really am not right so yeah but uh we all have a different level of learning exactly. and we all have a different level of love for technology right? right so if you're a beginner and you want that most uh expensive camera go for it yeah and hopefully you you learn to love and understand that camera right, right? And, and not be uh not so be na naive and and totally like, I'm on the streets and I got this, you know, <laughs> most expensive camera. Like, well, okay, then I'm gun and I'm gonna, you know, Aiden. It's like somebody comes up and hugs you, like, and then like you have nothing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like my buddy, he 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 had a he just purchased a Pentax six seven. Yeah. And, uh, and it was the camera that I was gonna actually gonna buy, but he ended up buying it first, and then he left it in his truck, <laughs> unlocked for one oh, hour. Yeah. Gone. One hour, it was gone. <laughs> yeah, and he lived, you know, very nice neighborhood. Yeah, but he didn't write the serial number down. And when when they you know when the police came out and asked him all the information, then he like I don't know, I don't have. It. Right. So I feel I felt bad for him. Like he just spent thousands of dollars on this camera, and, and it's it gone. Yeah. And he had it for less than a month. Oh, that hurts a lot. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, that sucks. You know? Yeah. It's those kind of things real here. But let's, what else do we want to know? Let's let's get a little like uh what's the word vein in here? Like yeah. tell me which camera is, is the most expensive camera you ever bought. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my Hasselblad. Yeah. Or is it yeah, that would be my Hasselblad. Yeah. I, I traded six cameras. To buy oh. that one camera totally worth it yeah totally <laughs> worth it yeah oh i love that thing it was mint i knew where it's coming from i didn't buy it off of ebay yeah it was a customer that, that was just old and never really used it yeah because he got it to digital gotcha so i traded in my f series nikons and a medium format for, for, that, for that one camera sounds like like a good deal for me <laughs> it was a good deal <laughs> and I love it. I should shoot more with it, but like I, I only pull it out for like special occasions, hmm. you know. Or, uh, not that I like I want to treat it like a baby. I just I just have uh, 
certain looks like a because it is a six by six right and so so by shooting that uh i i just the glass is amazing oh my gosh the images are yeah spot I, on. I, I seen them yeah it looks yeah, so, really nice yeah. so tell me a little bit about uh like the your favorite genres and like um how you approach each project or like your personal projects you know right. like, like in so, YouTube videos when you bring the model because that's like what I noticed, you know, like that's a big part of your photography is working with the model and do these like urban sort of fashion kind of style, you know. Right, right. That's what I love about mine. I like street style, urban fashion photography, right? If, yeah. If I could do that all day, I would do it, right? Sure. But because we don't have that many jobs available to us here in the state, yeah. at, least, at least for me, I'm, I'm not like Uh, actively searching for them yeah it's just what it comes along so i'm doing a lot of the um commercial shoots right or uh, companies local companies that see my uh instagram images sure. or just know me for for what i do and they hire me to do that so that would be my my uh my go-to like fashion editorial or right. fashion street you know street urban kind of feel but Really, I just shoot everything and anything so that I'm always prepared for those incidents, right? Yeah. Like if I'm doing street photography or if I'm doing landscape or if I'm doing uh, events. Sure. Right? I do a lot of events com for Comic-Con here. They call it Fan X. And so Sweet. I get a lot of practice there and I and I build a portfolio so that, I, so that uh, if I needed to, I can produce the, the work that uh, the client wants me to do. So I would say just shoot everything, right? It, yeah, as much as you can. It, it, yeah, especially like now, and I see a lot of people doing kitchen shoots or you yeah, know, no. product <laughs> shoots, you know, just, just of the family or whatever, just practice shooting. And, uh, and then eventually you'll, you'll uh, reach your goal, your potential of what you want to be. Right. Yeah. If it's boudoir or, or whatever, whatever you know. direction you decide to go. Yeah. 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 yeah I, so I had had, I had had friends that did a uh, fine, fine art. Right. Yeah. News. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I, he's a real close friend of mine and he travels and he does that, but he's like, I'm, I'm tired of this. So I'm <laughs> tired with some, some of the models like, well, kind of what you chose to do. And that's what, people are drawn towards you that, yeah. that like your style. So right. you kind of have to do it unless you completely do a 180 and, and I don't see him doing it. And, and he can, he has the, he has the skills and, and the, uh, yeah. you know, the, the know-how. Well, for so. sure. Especially when for a long time, period of time, you've been doing something, you, know, you, you what you, you want to think that you get not perfect, but close uh, is perfect and also your eyes get drawn to certain type of images you know it's like uh, i'm gonna drop a video soon they talk about uh, two different experiences when i took uh, two different um photography classes and one of them were like it was like the crappiest worst experience ever and the other one it was all the opposite you know you have these amazing teacher the more than a teacher is a mentor you know you instead of yeah pushing their beliefs on you kind of um, sort of tried to teach you how to find your eye and, and why you, what are you drawing to? And, and, right. and as much as the other class was crappy, I started seeing the, my like the photographs that I took. And even though in, in the first class, it, the, I mean, I have to admit my, the photos are bad. <laughs> like it's so bad, but I can see a few things. They like, Oh, In these other class, they kind of there are some patterns, you know, to what I'm attracted to photograph. Right. So, you know, but oh, you made made some good comments there. Uh, like when I was an illustrator, or when I was in graphic design program, my instructor was almost as old as I am, if not, or like maybe a, a year apart. But uh, I thought my stuff was good. Yeah. And he's like, no. You need to fine tune it. You need to do this. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. And it, it was all pride, right? It's like, like you're 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 hurting me. Yeah. Like, and and if I just let go of that pride and and listen to what you had to say, 
yeah. I would have done tons more better. But in 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 years to come, yeah. looking back, um, I, I pursued I pursue it like I do with photography, uh, with a passion, and yeah. I got so good that I ended up creating my own company. And he worked with me on my with my with projects that he had, and he was he was just like a minute he he admitted to me that of all the students he's had, yeah, I was the only one that actually pursued it and, and as did living it, yeah. a career living and like I'm the prodigy of him kind yeah. of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and he was stoked, and I was stoked to hear him uh, give me that type of compliment, and that's. And that's kind of, you know, not not me being prideful, but that was a prideful moment of, For sure. uh, of my career, right? Having a, a professor say, "You're you're right here with me, if not above me," kind of thing, right? Right. Be, no, totally. Excelled. So, yeah. Anyways, I don't know if that was off topic or whatever. Oh no, not at all. I think um, it's important because you know, like we talk you know everything comes back to like having the possibility of of having access to all this information i mean if you ask me yeah. if somebody asked me like uh, should i go to school to take a class specifically you know photography or video related right. like it becomes pretty complex for me to answer because yeah. for, for me specifically for me kind of I, I i like that interaction of being in a classroom and have that right you know, experience with the person Maybe. there. But for a lot of kids now, like that's like the the online thing and YouTube, like it's hard to, to really recommend it. Like a lot, at least the basics, you can learn it so easily in YouTube. Right. So it, it, I mean, it comes really great that comment of you because for me, the only time that a class makes sense to me wasn't really for what I, I mean, sure, what I learned. But it's like finding these persons is the the kind of um, elevates you, you know. Uh, right. Like I said, my second teacher like start analyzing me the first day, uh, like okay, let me see your photography. Start checking everything, and then come back like a couple of minutes later. And, like here's a list of photographers that I want you to check. You know, they can sort of have a few a few similarities with you, and you know, I start guiding you instead of enforcing what they like it's like find right, right. find find your pad i'm gonna help you to find your pad and get better and that's that's really hard to find sometimes yeah no i can't i uh, agree with, i agree with you there because uh, when when i was when i wanted to try to do like flash photography yeah i had one one a friend i said hey can i be your mentor or can you be my mentor and teach me flash photography And he's like, no, I can't because, because he had a bad experience, right? Mm -hmm. Someone, someone he taught, uh, ended up, uh, in a sense, stabbing him in the back, mm. like taking his techniques and his teaching and sure, and sure. Uh, making it his, uh, his like saying it, it was his style, his everything, and uh, totally. so because of that, it left a bad taste in his mouth, and and he would teach me. And so I was really bummed, you know, because I was being sincere and, and genuine on sure. wanting to learn flash photography. But uh, I think over the time, it, like literally, if you wanted to learn that, you force yourself to shoot like that every day. Yeah. So you get it, right? There's, so now he looks at my work and, and he's like, I'm glad you learned, you know, because cause sometimes you have to either someone says, so. Most of the time, it's like when so says, "Oh, you can't do that." I turn it around <laughs> yeah. and say, "Watch I'm gonna, me. I'm gonna do it. I'm yeah. gonna do it." <laughs> yeah. So that's the kind of, you know, that's the that's my that's my per personality. Sure, I'm that sure. kind of guy. Yeah, hundred percent with you. Like I always get pro trouble when I was younger. Because, so yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna really uh, I'm gonna freaking show you up. You know, like I'm gonna do yep. better than you. You know. Yep. <laughs> yep. A I, little bit. A little bit of comp competitive. Comp uh, sorry for the, the word. Uh, competitive, competitive attitude. Uh, yeah. It's helpful. Like you know. Definitely. For sure. Um, 
Tell me a little bit, what's your favorite um, film stock, man? Because I see you shoot all kinds of ones. Like recently you post a little bit on your Instagram with weird like color shift film stocks. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have a, a, a specific favorite, uh, but I do, I find myself shooting Por Porsche 160 or 400. Yeah. And, and sometimes I'm experimenting with different film grains uh, just because I want to I want to get that artistic yeah. uh, view right and I want to see what it does and how far I can push it and uh, so it's not really necessarily the the film that is my favorite it's it's how how can I use that film to make an image the way I want it to make mm. to look the way I want it to look in my head right sure so sure. So a lot of times when I'm shooting, I forget what I put in the uh, camera. <laughs> yeah. And I and I, luckily I just use Sony 16, and, and shoot true. it the way again, the way I see it out there. It's based on the conditions outside sure. that dictate the images that I get back. And so, so it's like a whole. It's like Christmas when I when I get back. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> and then I would. I wouldn't remember how to do it because all I remember is like either Sunday 16, the settings, sure, sure. <laughs> but, but like, oh, what was, oh my gosh, that's crazy. I ended up using a uh, Ektar 100 or as opposed to, you know, Fuji, a, uh, Fuji Pro 400 age. Yeah. Like last, this last one or all the ones that have been posting so far have been Pro 400 age. Right. And, and you might notice that I've, I've changed it up this, this year by going black and white and then color and then black and white. Yeah. Uh, just to give myself my Insta Instagram kind of a, a fresh look right? sure. uh, or uniform look yeah. before. And even then I wasn't, I didn't believe in any of that, uh, yeah. but I wanted to present a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. And again, my, my followers, a lot of people that are following are followers and I become friends with them. Sure. And then they're, People that come in and go like they just want likes and follows and whatever and that's fine it but is I'm what it game. yeah it is what it is i mean you know um it's been great to have a, a tool like instagram because i have a lot of people yeah. or friends even close to me that i mean it's been a great platform for them to you know keep moving as a artist and photographers but then you know it's this other side it's always going to be a yin yang kind of thing yeah, no matter right. what, even even with um, with big uh, gallery stuff, like I can't I cannot deal with the gallery attitude of, of how it right. wor how it works. But if you start like you know slow down and seeing Instagram, the galleries, and like it's kind of like sometimes the same vibe, you know. It's it's yeah. the, you know it's yeah it's just a fifty fifty kind of thing, and you try right. to to take the the good stuff and maximize it as much. Right. Now let me ask you: Have you uh, uh, printed any of your work? Yeah, I try to print as much as I can. I don't print every single thing because obviously right, right. it gets pricey. But at least uh, uh, a chunk of the the stuff that I like, my personal photography, like yeah, I, I try to print it, uh, hang it in my walls. It's a really great way to um, to see your work too. I mean, especially once you start going in bigger prints. The experience, right. the experience is so different. It doesn't, you cannot say that uh, watching a photo on your phone is the same experience than watching a big print. It's just changed so much. Right. No, I agree with you. So I have printed uh, some of my work in the past sure. uh, from my client work and then sell it to them back, <laughs> even though they paid me for the, the uh, session. Right. But, uh, no, I don't. I don't mind selling my work. Uh, yeah, no, no problem with that. That kind of work, right? But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, like it, for for it's different. Yeah, for you me, know, it's, not, uh, it's not just on your com your computer. No, it just changed. And then again, even when you have a, I, I have a big 4K monitor here, and this big is like 40 inches, whatever. And still, I prefer how how pictures looks and like paper, you know, and that you can hold it and get as close and, you know, not necessarily to pixel peep, but all the the stuff that's going on in the on the frame. 
Right. Um, like, for example, when I work with uh, models for time for print, I give them the obviously, obviously the digital files, but also I, as you know, as much as I can, I, I imprint at least at eight by ten, and I give it to them, and their expression of their face, you know, it's like they cannot believe, like it has, like again, it's just a different experience. Yeah, I agree. So. Are you, are you, is this uh, recording all yeah. 20 minutes or more? Yeah, I'm more. Yeah. To record. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the reason I'm recording straight to my computer. Oh, okay. So we, I don't we, know how to do that. Um, how to do that. You can ask me later. I can show you a little bit. It's not that hard as it looks. Yeah, because then you're not limited for four minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just do the 40 minutes and repeat myself. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, it, it's fine for because you know what happened last time. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure everything is fine as recording, but it doesn't yeah. hurt to have a backup. Yep, definitely. Let's see. Yeah, man, if you have questions, just throw it at me. Okay. So, let's see here. Uh, by the way, yeah. Currently working at home. Yeah, I'm a home dad, and um, oh, that's right, that's right. And uh, I get my hands on whatever I can, either per personal projects or paid gigs. I try to balance right. it out. Right now, I'm in a strange position where I have a seven-month-old baby, and that's pretty yeah, tough. That's that. that's a tough one. <laughs> you know, like I, I had to be strategic about the time. So I'm being more selective. I'm working a little bit less, but I try to, you know, either get something that pays a lot or, you know, an interesting project. Right. Now. That's where I am right now. Right. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. So do you prefer black and white or color? Ooh, yeah, that's a tough one. But I think if if I'm on one of those, you know, the, the, the questions that always throw you, like, if you only have one chance, like, to... Shoot something definitely will be black and white. Okay, but and what camera after that? What what sir? Oh, what what, what uh, film like stuff? Uh, like, what? do you prefer thirty five or media format? Ooh, damn that will that that's gonna be linked to what kind of type of photography we we'll like to shoot. If I only have one type of photography, uh, right. me, it will be medium format, and and that will be portraiture. That's probably my favorite genre. Okay. And in film stock, it will be um, Acros 100. Yeah. I love that film stock a lot. The inky tones, how the highlights, you know, sh kind of shine, but it's not like overexposed shine. You know, it's a really nice um, rendition of the highlights. Yeah, that will be that will be my my whole combo. <laughs> nice. So, I I was just looking through your Instagram to see, because I I've been posting just lately a lot of my my work, yeah, and uh, different uh, film grains with E six cross processing, E six. Sometimes it gets money, you know. If it's not like uh, expired film. Mm. And, and it, sometimes when you cross process it looks like it's it's like uh expired and ugly yeah you know like that muted green and and ugly brown tones <laughs> it's i guess i think it's just a matter of how you shoot it yeah uh, probably during the time yeah. day whatever but it's kind of like a cine steel you know like a lot of yeah. people try it on bright sun or whatever and like nah, yeah not, it doesn't work it's not work you need to go like, and, and, yeah it just it looks bad <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of i seen some people doing great things with expire film but i think they already have a really good idea of what they want to create yeah so it works for you know, them yeah with well, 
So I used to shoot that. Yeah. When, I had the, when we had it. But uh, for now, it's, you know, it's not like uh, I rushed out to get it. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't live in a city, like, with neon city, neon lights. <laughs> yeah. To, like, justify the, I think it's, like, $12 a, a roll. A roll, right? yeah. Right? So. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, they, they hand roll that thing because if the guys that are watching this don't know, it's, uh, they cut the, it's, it comes from the um, movie film, you know, stock. Right. Five movie. So they cut it and they roll it and everything, which is a whole process, you know, it's a lot of work. But yeah, it's, to me, it's in the still for me, it's a really specific kind of photo shoot. It's not like, I a, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't buy it that much. And, and, and I think it's also like we were talking about before, like my favorite film would be because I'd have to choose whatever the look that I'm looking for, for that, for that shoot. Yeah. Uh, will determine what type of uh, film I, I choose to use. Right. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's film or digital. Totally. Like, I'll do both. But, but it's just like, what, what is the job? Uh, the tool needed for the job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So everything we've talked about so far is is a tool to me, right? So it's yeah. like, what tool do I need to bring to make this look amazing? Yeah. For the client. That's true. Like, there's no so, other. Regardless, or yeah, regardless of, because they don't know. They don't know that this camera is thirty five dollars. Or. <laughs> Thirty-five hundred dollars, you know. Or, or you hope they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know. hope anyway. Yeah, like, <laughs> you hope that they uh, don't know. <laughs> you show up on a professional shoot with your iPhone, like, oh, okay. Yeah. I thought this guy was professional. <laughs> He's charging yeah. me how much? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, it's a funny talk, a funny topic. The whole professional word and what is professional was not when every single day. You know, like technology is advancing. To, uh, like you say, I'm pretty sure there's been somebody out there that get paid pretty well and they shoot with their iPhone. Right. So, you never know. yeah, exactly. And you never know. <laughs> so, well, okay. So let me ask you this. There's another question I, I just thought of. Go ahead, I, man. Uh, when I was watching my video. <sighs> but it was like skates by mine. <laughs> what was it? Don't worry, we have time. With, yeah, it had to do with the video I was watching about what you would shoot. Uh, well, we'll have to keep going. I can't remember the, the question now. Um, video, video. Um, it was, was it on video? The Super 8? No. Well, let's see. That's another thing that's coming uh, be, becoming big, too, because some of the hipsters are, like, uh, shooting you know, eight, Film eight millimeter super, super eight millimeter. Yeah. And uh, the process is like, it costs about a hundred dollars to process. Yep. And yeah. it's just three minutes of video. <laughs> yeah. Like that's an expensive hobby. Yeah. That's the reason I don't do it that much. I probably done it like three or four times in a span of five years. For that same reason, it's just so expensive and, it's not. It's not like shooting film where it's cost effective, still reasonable. It's just. It's just so expensive. One roll of Super A film, I think, is like fifty bucks around that. Yeah. For three minutes and plus the developing, so yeah, it it adds up pretty fast. Yeah, I think there's a a, a company in California. I can't remember the I think company's it's, name. It's, it's in LA. It's California. But... Oh, okay, okay. There's one in LA called the Super 8 millimeter store or something. There's a big yeah. one. But same thing, it's just the prices are high. There's ways to develop a home, but they were way more complex than than regular 35 millimeter photography. Right. Just, yeah, it's so yeah. hectic. I, I start researching, like, oh, maybe I can find an alternative. I can do it at home. And, like, and also, the chemicals are way more um, toxic than usual. Photography, <laughs> photography chemicals so there's another layer of like i don't know if i want to raise my health for this yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, exactly like no no thank you but i think 
<laughs> exactly. Why why is melting? Why are these fingers melting? Yeah. Why why my taste is, tastes like metal? Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like if the price comes down, yeah, sure, I'm I would like to try it more. But at least yeah, for now, I have a friend. Um, I don't know if you know him. He's an Instagram. Uh, Patrick though, he's an Oceanside. He he um like find a way to keep like developing prices lower in a way that he do it. That he collect all the film and then goes to a lab in LA. They kind of they borrow it to him or lend to him and right. He do all the work, so the price go down a little bit. And he's right. trying to find a way to to make you know Supre developing more accessible. Like maybe half of of the price, like fifty bucks, which still you know a lot, but not a hundred. So, yeah, let's see how that evolves. Because again, with film photography, it's not really like the prices are going down. <laughs> you know, even they become popular. Right. Like it, I actually, they're a little bit going up. Recently, caught a, you I don't know if you hear it. It's gonna raise the price of the film. How you feel that thing is gonna go though? You think it's gonna keep keep going up or? Yeah, I think it'll be. Uh, I don't know. With the populate uh, the popularity of yeah. film now, especially with the younger generation that wants to shoot film because they're tired of shooting uh, digital. Yeah. Right. That that's all they grew up with is digital. It's like you see the insertion of film, uh, Super Eight. Uh, what else is there? Um, 110. Polaroid. Yeah. Polaroid. 110, Polaroid. Yeah. So I think it's going to, it'll reach a certain cap, like say in five years or, or, you know what I mean? Like it's, they'll, they'll either, it's going to peak and then, and then dive down, down. Yeah. Or, or peak and just level out. Just right? stay so, flat in the one. Yeah. 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 Because, so I have the, uh, the advantage of seeing that, yeah, uh, because next door is is a camera store that I actually work for, gotcha. under under this company. Sure. Um, I just see a lot of young people coming in and and wanting to shoot film specific, right? Which is sure. good. Yeah, yeah. So we supply the the film and and, and lately it's been uh, almost eighty film eighty rolls a day. Mm. On location, no which, bad. It's <laughs> not too bad. Yeah. And yeah. So, and we get local, you know, local artists that come in and sure they're every day. And you learn the, their names and whatnot, but uh, but it's exciting to see that you know at least the your younger generation is learning and wanting to shoot film, which is good that's for, interesting. for me because that's that's a norm for me. Right. I don't mind shooting digital every now and then. Yeah, I mean, you know, especially new technologies like the Canon I just showed you. Right. I mean, if if everything comes down to film disappearing, yeah, I'm gonna be keep shooting on digital. Yeah. But until that happened, well, I have film. You know, has my heart right now. <laughs> yeah. No. For right. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Less heart. Less uh, to deal with, like in terms of like presets and Lightroom and. Oh yeah. All. It's like <laughs> it's instant. Instant gratification yeah. in it. Well, with on the digital side, but to like for me, getting getting my roll back and film and seeing it at, after it's been printed, you just imagine it's just Christmas. Yeah, you see those memories come to life, right? Exactly. And it's just it's something easy to share. You don't with photography or film photography. You had you had met, uh, a album. That you would share images with, right? Exactly. Now it's like Instagram, Facebook, uh, all these other uh, social platforms, yeah. software, social platforms, yeah. That you have to go to, and and you can look just like ah, oh, yeah, looked at, skip, skip. Yeah, you know what I mean, like no, there's no appreciation. Yeah, so, like um, I recently went to my parents' house and. I think I told you last time I dig some of their negatives and from some of the negatives there it was their wedding, and yeah. that, those rolls probably are. I would say forty years old, 
And yeah. they're, they're a little bit scratch up and whatever, but the fact that I, I was able to save them despite my parents not being careful with those negatives, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, it talks to you like of the longevity of these four men. It's just like I right. could, I saved them, they're there. It was so nice for them to have those prints back, like because I print all the negatives and show them they were like amused. Like, how come you saved this? Like, this is so old. We thought they were lost. And like you right. say, it's just so much memories that's invaluable. And, you know, with Night Shoot Digital, sure, I go from time to time, but I don't think, re like, regular people, they're not geeks about photography. They don't bother to check their hard drives at all. Yeah, no, I can. I agree with you. It's like a cold experience. <laughs> right. Okay, well... uh uh, it's been like uh, an, an hour ten almost, so yeah. it's, up, it's up to you, man. <laughs> oh yeah, let's let's, let's call it a night. Yeah. I gotta I gotta check on the kids to see if they cooked anything, burnt anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe some of those instant noodles. <laughs> oh man, I love that stuff. Yeah, I know. I, I and now with YouTube, it's like you start seeing these creative recipes, and like, how in the hell I didn't find out about yeah. this when i was younger they're way yeah, better exactly. now <laughs> yeah, all right maybe I, should, maybe I should start a cooking show <laughs> not bad idea they're they're pretty popular <laughs> share those cooking experiences right all right I, I've been those, yeah those <laughs> all right man thank you so much i really appreciate it i'm pretty sure this time um we don't need to redo anything. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm, being I'm being checking closely all this time, but it's okay. been great. And uh, yeah, hopefully after all this madness pass, I'm 100% sure that um, I, will, I will, we will do this. Um, <laughs> no problem. Ooh. We will do this uh, live. I, I will, I will definitely need to make a little trip to Utah. Definitely. All right. Yeah. Man. To that. Perfect. Have a good night, dude. Hey, Hugo. Appreciate your time. See ya. I look forward to seeing that, okay? All right. See Talk ya, man. Talk to you later. Bye.